This is season two, episode 26 of the Weekly Ward. I'm Dan Ward. Next side of me, my partner in crime, Mr. Kevin Jones himself. And we're going to be kicking off today's show with Mr. a little recap. Daddy and his spirit fingers. Spirit <laughs> fingers. Ooh. I love how you have sailboats on, too. <laughs> what is going on? I'm so, glad to be back. I'm right. glad to be back. Right. I got thrown to the wolves last week. I was not allowed to be on the show. This is and true. I got. A week's worth of fury pent up in me. I don't care if I'm not supposed to talk about it because of public relations reasons or whatever, but I was too angry well, and too inappropriate, and I work, got benched. Work's got to get done. And man. I'm back. We had to open cards up. We had, we had to do work. I'll take a look at that list uh, later on, Johnny. I wish... Uh, I, you can't post links in the chat. Usually they just ban you. Yeah, Nightbot. It's like um, my best friend. I wish I could do that to Kevin. I, I guess really message, it, message it to me on Facebook or something, and, and I'll take a look at it. Um, I'm totally lost as to what to play for Standard this weekend for Atlanta, so we can get to that later, too. Um, I hope that's a Standard deck, because that was the current <laughs> format, right? I don't know. I just see a link. I don't know anything. Yeah, we'll try to get to that <laughs> when, we, uh, when we scroll down here on the bar to the weekend outlook. We're going to kick off by talking about the SEG recap. Then we're going to hit the announcements. If you haven't seen, they're on the Wizards homepage. And we're going to try to go through them as, uh, I don't want to say easy as possible yeah. because there's a lot of information in there. And I'm still, after reading like most of it, still kind of like not 100% sure on, on a few things. So once we get down to the weekend outlook, if we got some time, we'll definitely take a look at that. And we will get to the modern as well. So, so... That leads Real us quick, to, before we get going, you went to the SCG Envy, right? Did I just spray you with Red Bull? My bad. Um, you went to the SCG Envy, right? I did. I did. Let me move closer here. I did. I, so I just looked at this creepy granola bar that's been sitting up here. That granola bar has been sitting up there for probably the entire time, our entire tenure on the show. Okay. Now, it's funny because when we went through security, they like made me chug my Red Bull. They wouldn't let me bring it in. It was terrible. Oh. Very unhappy. Didn't enjoy my life. It was not great. The um, Berlin Center, to be exact. The Berglund. Berglund Center. Yes, yes, yes. The Hamburg. The Berglund Center. And the event was well run. It's not SCG's fault that the Berglund Center was just abs absurd with their open container rules. Or so whatever. correction. It is SCG's fault, but they did run an extremely good tournament. It was their fault for not putting out to the player base what would happen. Yeah. But could continue. Um, but anyway. Hashtag Ward, I love you. You're great. Anyway. Um, Harlan's going through the thing. He's going through the security thing. Okay. And he's like, no, I don't have anything in here. And he's not bluffing. He's serious. He just has like his, his magic cards and a playmat and stuff in like a drawstring bag. And the woman is like, no, I don't believe you. And starts like hitting his bag like aggressively, and he's just like like gr like doing like the cop like pat down full cavity search thing on his bag, and is like rubbing it and like trying to garner the texture of the things in it. Some people would pay for and that she's kind like, of action. I knew it, and reaches into the bag and pulls out a granola bar just like that that is so old and flat and destroyed that there is a zero percent chance he even knew it was in his bag. It was hilarious. And oh he was like, yeah, I don't know where that came from. And she was like, nice try. Slammed the granola bar on the ground and was like, get in there. Holy it was great. It was just, she just <laughs> manhandled him and it was awesome. Yeah, I don't want to get off to too crazy of a tangent on that. But like when we talked about it the episode after that event, it was poorly the information for that event regarding what you could and could not bring into the center was not given out to like the public. And so, apparently, like, SCG spoke with the Bergen Center reps, mm -hmm. and they talked it over, and were like, hey, we're going to have these, you know, food vendors, we're going to give this discount card, but we're not going to allow anything into the site. And it's crazy because it's been told before where you, like, see security, like, at the Grand Prix, and they'll be like, hey, no outside food or beverage, but it's, like, soft, right? Like, okay, if you try to walk in with, like, a pizza and a coffee, they're going to say, no, they're you can't say come in. No, but they're, but they're not, not going to search your bags, your bags and do ridiculous things. And, like... Sure, this is a tangent, but, like, we all play in a lot of tournaments. This is a real thing that we deal with more often than... Like, we deal with this a fair amount of time. Yeah. I think that basically every convention center has this rule, and um, it's just loosely enforced by most of the convention center security. But it was it was very much not loosely enforced here. And I'll tell you guys what. I If you want to know that this story has a happy ending, I promise you it does, because 
The first day, I chugged my entire Red Bull two, two minutes before the Invitational started, and I was furious. The second day and the third day, Hot Daddy. Saturday and Sunday, you know what I did? I'll tell you what, you know how to get a 12-ounce can of Red Bull or a Monster H2O through um, obnoxious, overprotective security guards? The way you do it is you use one of those StarCityGames.com open series playmats. And you roll it I up. I rolled it up tight as can be inside the playmat, and I was like, nah, I just got my playmat here, my cards. And she, like, pats the bag, feels this big round thing that's playmat, can't feel that there's a Red Bull inside of it, and is like, all right, go ahead. And I was like, thank you. You have a great day. And then as soon as I got past, I was like, <laughs> daddy got you real good. <laughs> Tips and tricks with Kevin Jones. Uh, we could talk about real stuff now, but man, was I proud of myself. No, I got, I got something else to go off on this. All right. So my main beef with this is I get it. They want us to spend money at the convention center on their food. So one, water. I brought a gallon jug of water for two reasons. One, because water's good and you should drink a lot of water while you're playing Magic. And two, I've been trying to cut back a little bit, especially because I'm on the road a lot, play a lot of these tournaments, and not necessarily get to, you know, be as healthy. So I brought, like, a can of almonds in my bag, and I brought a water, a gallon jug. And the can of almonds, I was, like, upset about the fact that they weren't going to let me bring in. But I was like, okay, whatever. But water? Like... It's ridiculous. I, I can't explain how furiated I was that I had to just leave my gallon jug of water on the side. Like, I went up to uh, SEG, the reps, Ward, and talked to him, and day two was okay. I had to dump all the water out and then refill it with water from their water fountain. And it's like, like I really get it. Like, okay, I know <laughs> what? what I signed. I know, I know. <laughs> I know what I signed up for, right? So I'm okay with spending, like, you know, fifteen, twenty dollars throughout the weekend to buy like two meals maybe while I'm there. You know, yeah. I'm gonna have breakfast and have lunch both days at the convention center. But I think I spent like over sixty dollars because literally the first day I didn't have water, so I had to buy water. Then I bought a soda, then I bought food, then I couldn't like bring my snacks in, so like you're there all day. Like I'm a large individual, spoiler alert. I need to eat a lot of food. And just, like, I don't know, I was just really put off by it. And I think, like, in a community that has a ton of overweight people and just, like, an unhealthy lifestyle, like, to be honest, like, you know what I mean? This is an interesting direction yeah. to take this. Like, people that are trying to make good decisions in their life, like, and bringing water. almonds and almonds, water. Snack bars, fruit. Beef jerky. Like, yeah. you're saying, no, that's not okay, but you can have a candy bar for $5. You can eat fried chicken tenders and french fries till you just, like... Yeah. Sweat the cholesterol out, but that yeah. that's okay. Like what kind of message are we setting here? And like if you're not going to allow us to bring food in, have the prices be reasonable. A bottle of water for four dollars at a convention center. Well that's the point. Yeah. I mean that's like the, that's the point. But, but like they $2, don't let you bring things in and then they make the prices not reasonable. Sure, but I mean like that's two how or three dollars is like two dollars is reasonable for a bottle of water at a convention center. But this wasn't like, this isn't a sport sporting event, right? This isn't like, hey, we paid money to come here to, like, get entertained. No. Like, we came here because we want to play Magic. We, you know, some people professionally, We did, though. Whatever. We paid money to be entertained. We paid to enter the tournament. Not the Invitational, but, like, the Open Sure. Stuff. But, like... It's kind of similar. I, I don't know. It's more like a festival than it is like a... What's uh, going on, everybody? The gamers helping gamers top eight. We can get we can get uh we can look into that. I don't know if we still do. That was fun. Yeah. I did coverage. I loved it. Yeah. But all right. So future reference. Connor Bryant. Oh yeah. I heard. I wasn't. I wasn't here. We that did. Day. We, we were good. Great. We did good. I heard you did good. So yeah, that's that's my rant, and I'd like to see more people kind of talk about this on social media because I think it's something that's definitely worth noting. That like, hey. If we're going to go to the convention centers, like, the, the one that comes to mind every time is New Jersey. The one that the SCG always uses. The Somerset one. Somerset is, like, by far the the best one to go to as as for, like, the food It has the best drink. stuff, too. It has good chicken tenders. It has... Um, Sodas, like, reasonable. Italian $2. ices and tubes. Cents. Sodas at reasonable Italian prices. Ices. Red Bulls for three fifty. Yeah. That's, that's convention center is great. And then you can, like, walk out the back and you're just at a pool. Yeah. The hotel or True, whatever. yeah. And the double trees there, so you get your free cookies on. Yeah, yeah, you get your free cookies Love on. It. I like it. I like it. So moral of the story is I'm okay with paying a little bit more than we should have to for these because for the convenience factor of them being there. But 
to, to not allow water, to we not allow healthy yet. snacks. It's kind of ridiculous. We understand the contract. We're going to be extorted by the convention centers, and it just kind of is what it is. But, like, it's just ridiculous. Like, it, um, so, like, it should be like, oh, don't bring in, like, competitive products. Like, don't bring in a big bottle of soda if you're going to drink soda all day. Sure. You know? It, but if you have an, a Red Bull and they don't sell any energy drinks at the convention center and the most comparable thing is a, is a $5 20 ounce soda, I'm not buying your $5 20 ounce soda anyway. You're going to make me drink my Red Bull or throw it out and I'm going to find a way to sneak it in because that's what I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going, I'm going to be less inclined to spend money at your establishment if you annoy me. And it's weird too <laughs> because like not only will people, if you charge a reasonable price, like someone like myself and I think like 80% of the mm -hmm. community that you're going to be serving will just not care about bringing it in because they know they can get it there and they can pay for it there and it's reasonable. Yeah. So, all right. Moving on. Wait, wait, wait. I got something. It's, it's not about All the right. same thing, though. Well, then we'll save it for the end, because we already took we already took some time to... All right, it's brief, man. All right, it better be brief. It might spawn something less brief, but um, it's a big deal. Remember that time where we didn't do a show? Yeah. Next week? Coming soon, guys. Whatever, man. I'm having a good time. I don't even care. I'm going to enjoy it. If, you, yeah, if enjoy I get it shut down lasts. by production after this, I don't care. I'm going out He'll care. Swinging. He'll care. He'll say it today, and then next week, um, he'll be like, I can't. Please. American Airlines still has my luggage. Okay, I'm stopping you here. You're using American Airlines. You're setting yourself up for failure. They've had my luggage for two months. Okay. Where is it? They probably lost it. They probably just thought it was like some like homeless person's gatherings that just There's like so at the, many at the hats airport. in there. And they just like were like, There's hey, so many we're hats gonna donate in there. this to Salvation Army, and they don't even want it because it's just so old. I DM'd news. them on Twitter. I tweeted at them, and then they DM me, and they were like, "Give us your baggage reference number." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't have that." You know what this reminds me of? All right, so we need a topic called tangents. All right, you know what this reminds me of? When I was going to Australia, Pro Tour uh, Eldritch Moon, I had a layover in San Francisco, right? There was a storm in Chicago. We were on the tarmac. Boom, boom, boom. Thunder. We couldn't do nothing. I get to San Francisco. My flight left a half hour. I have to stay in the airport all day. Literally all day. I get, I arrived. Oh, on the way to Australia? On the way to Australia. Australia. So Australia. my flight was supposed to leave San Francisco at 1130. My flight landed at 11, like 45, 1150. So by the time I got out, I knew I was missing the flight. I go up to the agent and she's like, yeah, the next available flight, you're leaving tomorrow from uh, LA at 9 p.m. They don't charge you for that, right? No, it's their fault. So it's weather, it's whatever, they can't control that. So I'm like, okay, now I have to sleep at an airport and I'm not leaving till 9 p.m., which means I'm not getting to Australia for like another entire day. Yeah. Mind you, I'm at an airport. So I'm like, okay. I find this like, I don't want chair couch. It's 9 like p.m. that night. No, no, it's 11, it's like midnight, but I don't leave until 9 p.m. You the gotta follow me. The next day? Here. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought when you said 11.30, I thought you meant 11.30 a.m. No, p.m. Okay. So, I thought you were in the airport for 10 hours. You're in the airport for 21 hours. No. Yeah. No. Midnight to 9 p.m. the next day is almost 24 hours. Sure. You're, you're sure. in the airport for a day. For a long time. Let's just say a long time. Leave the airport. Yeah, no, my, my, I left the air, yeah, I left the airport. I had to take a connection from San Francisco to L.A. at 9 p.m. Yeah. And then I left L.A. at 11.30. No, I would have left the San Francisco airport and gone and lived my life. Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, I might have anyway, not even gone to Australia. I would have been so mad. I was so tilted that I just, like, found this chair couch thing. So we'll just call it the chouch. Oh, uh, the chouch? Okay. The chouch. And it like was was like actually almost conducive to my large manly body. Uh huh. So I'm like comfortable, right? And this lady comes up to me and she goes, "You know, you like you look like you were in the military, probably because of my haircut." And I go, "Man, she's got a dead read on me." Yeah. I go, "Yeah." She goes, "You know, there's a USO here, and for those of you that don't know, USOs are at a lot of major airports, and they're for service members and their families that are traveling to assist their travel experience, giving them like food." Uh, drinks, uh, recliners, and yeah, in this yeah. case, just helping it go smoother and stuff. Beds. Right? Ooh, beds. So just yeah. So so I go okay. And mind you, I've been to many USOs, and at this point, I'm not active duty anymore. So I've been to many USOs while I was active duty and while I wasn't, and had no problem. 
So I leave the security area, yeah. meaning it's at this time, it's like by the time the lady came up to me, it was like 2 a.m. Yep. So you can't get back into the airport because not until 4.30. Yeah, which doesn't happen. Oh, it's open. closed. Yes, yeah, so okay. it's closed until like 4.30 a.m. So I go out and I go to the USO and there's like some old, you know, lurch guy with like the <laughs> pad and he's like, yeah, sign in. And I'm just like so excited that there's a USO and I'm looking and there's like TVs, there's like couches, there's everything. Appreciate uh, the host. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and so like, I'm like, okay, this is not that bad. Now I'm going to have somewhere where there's Wi-Fi. I can sit down and I can like at that point watch the SEG that's going on uh, that weekend so that I can get a little bit more familiar with the format before I head. I can utilize my time, yeah. right? And the guy goes, do you have your ID? And I go, yeah. And I start signing the, the sign-in sheet and he goes, this is good. I like it. You're not active duty. And I go, you're right. I'm not. <laughs> and he goes, uh, well, this USO is only for active duty military members. I almost killed the guy. <laughs> I was like, so <laughs> mad. You certainly would not be active duty so, if you killed the guy. <laughs> so I was so mad. I was just like, I, I was so mad I didn't get mad. That's how mad I was. You were like, okay. Uh, no, I wasn't like, okay. I was just like, you're telling me I've been to like five or six different USOs throughout yeah. San Diego, Chicago, and you're telling me that you're going to not allow me to get, you know, some shut eye while my flight just got delayed because I'm not an active duty member and it's never been a problem anywhere else. Yeah. I lost it. Yeah. Walked out, then try to go back through security. Security's closed. closed. Can't go through security. I end up sleeping on the floor for six hours. I wake up because like somebody's coming up to like check their bags. Yeah. And I look up, it's like 6 a.m. or something. <laughs> and I'm or six, like five. Yeah, it was like six, five thirty, six a.m. And I'm just like, oh my back and i'm just like so tilted i like where this story was going anyway was that i tweeted at uso like thanks for really showing how much you appreciate your service members yeah and it was great well did uso reply no hell no they didn't they probably didn't want to know anything about it that's crazy i don't know why it was only active duty that's so weird yeah. If you've been to them before, that's so weird. That story sucks, man. I'm, I felt bad. I almost never feel sorry for you, <laughs> and I felt bad for you. Yeah, that, that was brutal. That was I brutal. felt really bad for you. I imagine you, like, sleeping on the floor, big, hulking dude. Your back is, like, like in a cartoon. It's just, like, radiating red lines. Like, yeah, and there's a point turning. where you're just, like, you're at the San Francisco airport, and, like, you just give up, like, not caring about, like, having your back to, like, someone that could yeah. just, like, do something. Yeah. You're just like, ah. Eh. I'm tired, whatever. I'm over Bunch it. Bunch of hippies, who cares? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All I right. mean, it's not like that anymore, but maybe maybe 50 years ago, San Francisco Airport was a bunch of hippies. I think my mom went there. She said she went to San Francisco and did hippie things in, uh, in the 1970s. Yeah. All right, let's get going here. We got the SCG recap. For those of you that uh, didn't watch the coverage this weekend... This was the first uh, tournament, the first premier tournament with the new standard format. Um, we got to see a four-color control deck, which I actually did a deck which of the week. Which is misleading. Yeah, it's it can basically, be misleading. It's basically Jess guy. Sure. With, with a, a fourth bolus. color. With a nickel bolus, right? Yeah. If that's the only black card is the one nickel bolus, right? Or is there two or what? Uh, you're just going to have to go watch the deck watch of the week that tech? I did. And uh, that's on www.kerwinsgamestore.com under content, hashtag yep. articles. Get them. That was totally misinformation. Uh, then Check we got second place, White Blue Monument. Mr. John and Rossum. Awesome Rossum. Gonna drive with John and uh, Evan, and it just like, eh. It was a little out of their way, and I was kind of off it. So I just wanted to like enjoy the weekend, and I did. <laughs> and he obviously did too. He crushed it. Rossum so, is great. Yeah. Then we have Zen, who's also great. This was, by the way, a huge weekend for uh, Lotus Box. Yeah, I saw Lotus that. Lotus Box is um, cool. Oh, we got any other comments for Lotus Box, or is it just cool? I mean, it's kind of like a team that's not a team, right? I don't know. I think they're like, like they're, one they're, of the Star City teams now. Well, they're pretty loosely like. There's a lot of people who have that shirt. They're pretty loosely organized. So okay, so teams under should we just say sponsored teams? Like, I mean, how do you we, want to distinguish? Because I don't, like I would say I'm the same thing goes true for Bearded Dragon. It is. Yeah. I hundred percent agree. Bearded yeah. Dragon and Lotus Box are similar. Yeah. They might have a group chat, but that's it. All right, Derek said team they wear shirts, so we'll just distinguish those teams as team that wear shirts. Yeah, Bearded Lotus Box, but then like you've got Card Hoarder and 
um, MTG that are actual teams that test together and stuff. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, then we have Zen was running a four color emerge deck. We got to see a decent amount of this deck on coverage. I still think it's a couple cards off, but I think uh, the Emerge strategy is something that we want to keep our eye on. I think it's very... Uh... That is cool. This is like a Sultai Delirium deck with the Emerge package in it. Okay. It's really interesting. I thought this would have been the deck of the week choice, honestly, because it's the most interesting deck to come out of this top eight, for sure. Uh, yeah. The second most interesting is probably the Mono Red deck. Yeah, Jonathan Joe with Mono Red Aggro I actually played against this deck at the in the online PTQ this weekend. Um, let's uh, let's Omar. look at let's look at Zan's deck. You want to look at Zan's deck? Yeah, it's interesting enough to me that I think we should we should talk about it. All right. Well, first let's just talk about Steven Dykeman. He had Black Green Energy. Oh, you want to run down the top eight? Yeah, first? kind of. Sure, sure. And then uh, Ben Weinberg with another Monument deck. We mentioned Jonathan Joe. Ben Weinberg Joe. is great. Also, uh, we still see. Adam Bowman, the Sliver Master. With Mono Black Zombies. Mono Black Zombies. I, I did like his list as well. And then uh, uh, Team the Old Faithful. So first, let's just go down the line. Four Color Control. Without going too crazy into this, um, I did do the Deck of the Week. So if you're really interested in that, definitely check it out. Just giving a little rundown There's of the cards There's not a here. single black card besides the one Nickel Bolas, right? Yes. Nickel Bolas is the only card that's uh, black that's in this deck. And I think moving forward, I think they're just going to get rid of it and just, if you can improve the, the man a little bit better. I don't know if it's worth it. You know, It's, it's kind of one. free though, right? Yeah. It, I don't know. Like, fetid pools could just be a blue-white land, right? And like... There's already four irrigated farmlands, and they probably want the fifth cycling land so you can play 27. Yeah, I kind of meant Port Town, but yeah, I, I, I get it. They I just, think there's going to be a fetid pools in this deck whether or not there's a nickel bolus in this deck. Well, then if it's free, then it's free, right? Yeah. There could be a Canyon Sloth in this deck, too. And plus, we only saw the matches on camera. We don't know how many matches like this guy just took Oh, he over. was wrecking people. With Nicol Bolas, I mean. He almost 9-0'd, and he crushed the tournament. Yeah, I think uh, those of you that, that did watch the tournament will, would have saw that. If they had more time, I think he would have won the second game versus Jonathan. And uh, he was on the the uh, turning point. They Did they go to time? They went to time, right? I think Jonathan won Did he win right before time? Yeah, 1-0-1. Like yeah, they went to time. So um, I would have had a shot to to bring it to a third game. But if it is free, then I do like having the flexibility of having Nickel Bolas. But... So pretty much this deck's kind of really just out there as far as numbers. It just has lots of answers, and it's really hard to play against because there's a ton of one-ofs in the deck. So I just think this is going to be a shell moving forward of like the base for the control deck. This deck is bizarre, though. Like okay. If you approach it from a, th uh, from a theoretical standpoint... A lot of things make sense. Supreme Will's a really good card. Fumigate's Very a decent good. card. Um, diversifying your Planeswalkers makes sense. Okay. Not having more Torrential Gear Hulks does not make sense. Torrential Gear Hulk is the stones. Yeah, but the problem is, like, with having one Torrential Gear Hulk and one Linvala, I think, like, it really... Like, first of all, you need something to get with Nahiri's Ultimate. You yeah. Know, that is a thing that this deck will have. And also, it takes away, I think, like... The, the game's I like the Mardu one, the, and stuff. Linvala. The one Linvala is cool. Okay. I'm not against the one Linvala. I would just have two more Gear Hulks at the cost of something else. Sure, but if you let me finish, what I was going to say is I think like by them not having as many creatures in his deck, he's less likely to get bl like blown out by the turns where he taps out for Gear Hulk and having to do that because that's the way the deck is built. And then they have unlicensed disintegration and you just die. Sure. But like you're not gonna win the game without ever playing a creature. I guess you. I guess you. This, could yeah, he did. He showed that. He played Dovin Bond and said yeah, your yeah. creature does not have activated abilities and has minus three minus zero. Oh. He did that. There's just a list it was in cool. the chat. I yeah, can't. I can't do a list. Can't right do now. the lists. Um, oh. message it to me on Facebook. I'll take a look at it. It's got Chandra Flame Caller. I like that. Doomfall. But. Um. So yeah, so I don't know. I, I understand what you're, where you're going with this, and I also agree that Torrential Gear Hulk is the stones. However, I do appreciate the thought process that I think went into their only being I love the, one in here. The sideboard cards, um, the Glory Bringers and Spell Quellers. I'm I'm about this jamming just the the control packet or the the transformational sideboard. Gideon an Ally of Zendikar. You have a, like a curve now of Spell Queller, Gideon Glory Bringer, which like. When used with the cheap defeat cards and like other other you know cheap interaction, it just makes your deck able to turn the corner really quickly, and I like that a lot. But what I don't like is that a braid comes out, and Michael says, "Hey, 
a break seems really good. And Michael's friends at the card store and people he talks to online, they're probably like, yeah, man, I really like a braid. I think it might be the best card in the set. He's like, all right, let's just cut two harness lightnings for it. Like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. He did it. I, he clearly did it. He, he did it. the tournament. He did it. But, like, I don't think that just shaving two harness lightnings is the way to play a braid. I think it's supplement. I think it should be the sixth one. Like, or the fifth one. Like, it should be at least... If you want to trim one magma spray, one harness for it, you can do that. Like... The thing that, that's good about a braid is that it can be essence scatter and negate. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, usually harness lightning is actually... Harness lightning is usually just essence scatter. The problem I think that there that he has with this deck, though, like, with the mana, is, like, you need to have magma sprays, or else you just can get, like, mardued out or zombied out. Because, like, having yeah. three sweepers in your deck, like, cool, like... They play Crit Breaker and you have a braid in your hand and they just go turn two, you know, two zombies or whatever or discard a card. Like, now you have your second lands, a tap land, uh, or you have to play I mean, a land and you can't play your turn you. three thing. So I feel you. It can get, it can get messy. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Well, this deck was sweet. It won the tournament. We're going to move on to the next deck. But before we do, I just wanted something we came up in conversation yesterday. I just wanted to uh, let our viewers know there's something that you kind of brought up to me that I think is a clever point with this card. Oh yeah, it's pretty interesting with Supreme Will. So like, generally when you play a counterspell, like one of the drawbacks to playing a counterspell is that your counterspells are pretty bad when they spell Queller your counterspell. And like- So like, and, and there's a couple decks that play Spell Horror. This deck sideboards it, Esper Vehicles deck. plays it. In the main deck is a three or four of. Um, White Blue Monument plays it a three or four of. There's like some Flash decks and Spirit decks running around that are mediocre, whatever, but not really the point. But there's some spell colors in here. You expect to play against it a couple times in the sure. 15-round tournament. And um, Supreme Will is great in a spell queller format because when they spell queller your Supreme Will that you're using to mana leak them, you can now kill their spell queller at your leisure and just use the anticipate mode or the impulse mode Yeah. because you get to do whatever when it comes back off. And... Uh, also, like, you can always just randomly kill the Spell Queller in the middle of, an, of a stack and, like, count or something. Yeah. Which is sweet. Happens a minimal amount of the time. But now you're not pigeonholed into having to do that. You can just kill it whenever. Sorcery Speed Spell. You know, you can kill it with Radiant Flames or Fumigate. Yeah, it's a and card. And Impulse. Hit it's your a, land drop. It's definitely a card that, like, I think is, it, if it wasn't already, has gone up a ton in, like, people's just thought process for building decks now. Like, it was always an inclusion, like, oh, you're playing a control deck. You need to have your, if you need to, like, exile them, the dissipates from the old formats, and the, you know, then we've had dissolve, and now the, the newest one is disallow. And, like, there's no disallows in this deck. This is a dedicated control deck. And, like, that just goes to show you the flexibility is just reigning supreme, if you will. Well, supreme will is, like, the disallow um, replacement. You yeah. know, it's like, it's Supreme Will instead of yeah, Disallow. That's what I'm saying. Just better saying. velocity. All right, let's move on. Harlan is mad about our situation. When are you mana leaking them when they have three mana open and they would rather quell it than pay, LOL? Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> no, but you could be end of turn Supreme Willing and then you just... Uh, like... I was thinking about, like, the monument making spell color cost two so that you can't pay for it. Like you have two yeah. mana up, not three. I was that's what I was thinking about yeah, and I didn't really Yeah, I wasn't think looking at like a hard counter. I was thinking of like more end of turn, I'm gonna go search and then they're like queller. But you're right, Harlan, maybe that's not gonna happen. Or maybe that percentage that it happens uh, is just very small, so Alright, so you wanna talk about Zen's deck. Let's pull up the four color emerge deck. Here we are. Yeah, so this is basically the shell of Dredge okay. with, like, remember the old four-color MGG deck? Do you remember that deck? Yes. Like, Jace yeah. Prince Prodigy, yeah. Gather the Pack, yep. that deck? I played it at the Pro Tour. Okay. The Rally deck before no, Rally. It was, no, it was after Rally. Yeah. It was Band Company format. Uh... It, was, it was the deck that Ben Friedman, Jim Davis, Andrew Jessup all played at the Invitational last, last summer. Maybe I didn't play that one. It was like... Haunted Dead, Prize Amalgam, Deep Fiend. No, I did not play that deck. Flip Jace with Gather the Pack. And it okay. was like, um, and I think there might have been an Emrakul in it too. It was sure. sweet. But anyway, it's similar to this deck. It played 
traverses, um, grapples, and then K return with almost no mana to cast it. Oh, there's a mountain in his deck, which is sweet. Mo most decks don't even have that. Um, so this deck is like a hybrid between like the Dredge deck and like a Sultai Rock Delirium deck. And I really like this deck. I think that uh, Grim Flyer and Champion of Wits is sweet. You can probably attack for uh, four of some percentage of the time. Actually, probably not. Like, Evolving Wilds, discard two things. There's not nothing that's two types, right? No, you can't, you can't ever attack for four on turn three. At least not by casting Champion of Wits. You can crack Vessel and attack for four on turn three, sure. which is cool. But, um... Champion of Wits does put carry turns in the graveyard. I think this deck is underrated, and people should um, certainly consider it going forward. I really like the Mindbender in the board. I really I like do. the Last Hope in the board. I like Mindbender a lot. I do think this is one of those decks that, like, you said it's going to be tough. For one, it's hard to play. And two, I think as the standard metagame, you know, progresses, we're going to see, like, the numbers get tuned. And that's when the deck like this is really going to, like... You know what this deck is missing? I do. It's missing a god. It is missing a god. It's missing some scab. The scarab god. god. Is, this, is that Banana your favorite phone. card from the new set? I, it's the most broken card in the new set, I think, besides you think this it's card. it's more broken than Champion, Champion of Wits? Champion is broke. Scarab god is really, really broke. Ooh, Woodland Wanderer. Deck. Oh, there, there's one place. more deck. I know that the rest of the decks are kind of stock. There's one more deck I want to show you because it's so cool. It's far and away the coolest deck, at least in my opinion, in this in this top six. The Kevin Jones decks. So Daddy's Deck Spotlight. I think it's on page two, maybe page three. Page I, three. I want to highlight John. You want to hit deck the red deck quick? quick? Just really quick. Kari it's a, Zev, Skyship uh, Raider. It's a deck that like came up online a little bit last week. And uh, shout out to John. He's a cool dude. Played against him in the Team GP in San Antonio. He uh, crushed my teammate Andrew Solano playing uh, what was it? Naya Eldritch Evolution Chord. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, Jonathan yeah. Job's a good Magic player. I think um, he's a poker player now. I'm not sure. Yeah. He lives in Las Vegas. Oh, right on. Uh, he Ru Rudy stayed with him for the GP. So. All right, so here we go. We got a couple uh, Minotaurs. We got some on crop crashers. We've got this little guy, the two one Haster, that's making creatures not be able to block, and also has him uh, eternalized, which is kind of big. And pretty much all this deck's trying to do without going through every single card is it's like back to just like mono red beats with a little Eldrazi splash because Thought Not Seer and. Uh, this card right here. This, this card is the truth. Earthshaker El, Kenra. Eldrazi Obligator. Yeah, Eldrazi Obligator is fine, but Earthshaker no, Kenra this, is the reason why. This card is more than fine. No. The amount of games that he won based off of this card this last weekend was just like every time they had him on camera, this card was putting in work. You know what card this deck can never beat? What card? Kozilek's Return. <laughs> Yeah. I guess sometimes. It, it can beat it, I think. Kauri Zev might be okay. And all the it. creatures like have haste. It like, really can't beat a flashback Kozilek's Return. It can't. I don't think so. Oh, there's a Reality Smasher in this deck? Yeah, game? there's a What a reality. weird deck. There's Handware Garrison. Does it have Handware, the Riding no. Township or no, whatever? No combo, just Handware. What are you doing? Enough. I love it. Uh, Invigorated Rampage, I like this. To go wide versus the blue-white monument decks. Like, they're trying to go wide. You can just run right over them. Two different guys. Yeah, I like this deck. The more right? I look at this deck, the more I want to register Kozlex Return this weekend. Oh, yeah? Card's doesn't great. kill Kari Zev on the front side, but it does kill the monkey. It does kill Raghavan. Don't call him the monkey. His name is Raghavan. It's the monkey. It's a legendary monkey. It's like the, the monkey only monkey from Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only monkey. It's legendary. All right, what's this other deck you want Get to Get down about? to page three. Ooh. Let's go. You're so demanding. Tim, your monster. Bant spirits. Why every time that you're like, dude, we got this cool deck I want to highlight. It's always like just the same deck. This person you always went eleven and four every single this time. This person went eleven and four in a match like, tournament, and it me wasn't the most me. Nimble, fragile, flying creatures that I can ever come up with, and we'll put them into the same deck, and we'll just call it this a deck new deck. This deck is great. It has Where's pack guardian. Spirit of the hunt. <laughs> is this a draft deck? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> See what I tell you, dude. Sorry. I am. Fired up right now. All right, well, give it a rundown then. Fired up. I've got 28 creatures, two planeswalkers, and seven spells. So the rundown is four of Duskwatch Recruiter, Lamholt Pacifist, Mausoleum Wanderer, Nebelgas Herald, 
And those are the four ofs. And then we got three Rattle Chains, three Spirit of the Hunt, and three Oath of Nyssa. And then you got two Nimble Obstructionist, two Pack Guardian, two Blossoming Defense, two Verdurous Gear Hulk, and two Unsubstantiate. And rounding out the main deck, two Tamiyo. And your land base looks like this. Seven Forest, four Island, four Botanical Sanctum. A Canopy Vista, a Fortified Village, four Lumbering Falls, and two Prairie Streams. So this is a, is a blue-green deck splashing for two Tamios. And the only ways to cast it are four White Sources and three Oath of Nyssa. Okay. So you're just all in on this deck. You're just like, hey, this is what we're going to do. I don't know. This deck up. is cool. Like, what is this deck good against? Let's think about it real quick. It should be good versus blue white, right? You have Flash. You've got Rattle Chains. Maybe not. Maybe not as good. Imagine just attacking with your Dust Watch Recruiter and your Lamhole Pass. I love this make, card. Like, I love this card. Intelligent by the way. double blocks, and you're just like, all right, put Spirit of the Hunt into play. All my things are now two fives. And they don't get any trades. Yeah. <laughs> I really love uh, Obsustantiate. I think it's a card that's been underplayed. And I think um, if you're not ready for that card, you can just get blown out. I'm about to sleeve this up. Oh, yeah? Because I don't know what to play Saturday. And it's the time for Harlan to stop listening. I think he's derailing our tournament. He's just doing all these bad things to, to his deck. And trying to tell me to play it, I'm about to sleeve this up. All right, well, let's pause that for yeah, the weekend yeah, outlook cool. because I'm going to ask you what you're playing and what your team's playing. I'm playing this. I want to know. Unless you are not drag playing. Drag me out of the room. You are not screaming. playing this. I have been so hype on Pack Guardian since it got printed, and it's finally my time to play Pack Guardian. You may discard a land card if you do put a two-two green wolf at Flash, at Murders Planeswalkers. You know they can never attack if you do this and then play Spirit of the Hunt, right? You have a 4-6, a 2-5, and a 3-3. Three, three. It's like, whoa! And imagine if you go second Spirit of the Hunt. You know what happens then? You're just, it's all walls. It's just like you're playing a wall. You have three in your deck. Where There's no collected company or quarter calling There's in this Othanissa. deck. Othanissa. Yeah, great. Othanissa. That solves everything. And unsubstantiate. I don't know. I'm not saying this deck's bad. It definitely gets a flavor award. But I think the, like... Come on, Tamiyo is a card you want always, right? You just always want this card. Tamiyo is great. I kind of yeah. want a third. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely want at least a third. That's what I'm getting to. At but least this deck third. uses its mana very efficiently. It has, eight, it has seven things you can play on turn one okay. in um, Wanderer and Oath. Sure. And then it has a lot more things you can play on turn two in eight Werewolves and three Rattle Chains, plus Unsubstantiate to fill out the curve. And then it has a lot of threes in Nimble, uh, Herald, and Spirit of the Hunt. Um, I don't know. I'm just and Duskwatch activations. There's card advantage in this deck. There's tricks in this deck. You can't really kill anything. You have Haze of Pollen. You can never win if your opponent has a Walking Ballista, but that's that's okay. Like Winding Constrictor Walking Ballista is a nightmare for you, but that's all right. You know. All right. So before we move on to the next topic, we're just talking. Standard's great right now. Sky went 11 and 4. Standard's great. Yeah. You're playing the Spirit of the Hunt. This deck like, is playable. You're doing it. This deck is not bad. It's playable. So, all right. Before we get on to the next topic, we're going to send you off with a little uh, ad clip here we have for our newest program on the content side of KGS. And it's a show called Read, Watch, Play. Um, we've got, if you're, in, if you're in the need or in the mood... For comic anything books, related to comic books, movies, superheroes, hero clicks, fandoms, that board type of games, thing. superhero toothpaste, superhero toothbrush. If watching two intelligent gentlemen wax eloquent on all things in, you know, fantasy, comic books, superhero fandoms, you'll be very inclined to enjoy this Read, show. Watch the t-shirt. Great time. Read, watch the lunchbox. Read, watch And play. the kids are going to love this one. Read, watch the flamethrower. Here we go. Also, Cliff. And so, like, Green Lantern's breaking into the back cave, and what does it discover? A cave inside the back cave. Caveception. Yes. But they're she's, I heard she's not even in the movie that much. Look, well, of course. I mean, it's Mary Jane. It's not, it's not Mary Jane presents with Spider Man Homecoming, okay? <laughs> And you score six victory points. But while that flash is in play, the rogues cannot use their game effect, which is called teamwork. Right? So when I use teamwork. All 
All right, and we're back. So if you're interested in that, that's going to be going on 6 p.m. Eastern time every Wednesday. We're streaming it live from the uh, store here in Catskill. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that coming on later today. As of now, Kevin's going to talk about our, our second sponsor, Gatorade. Imagine. I, I thought you were going to go somewhere with, like, you know, want to be like Mike. Like that commercial. No, I was going to be like, yo, if we got sponsored like, by Gatorade, I'd be, like, hype. That would be great. And the electrolytes would be like... What's your favorite Gatorade flavor? We're talking... We're giving them in, inadvertent advertisements. Probably... That's exactly what they want. What is it? Blue Raspberry Frost? The Frost one. The blue... The fr light blue one? Yeah. Glacier Free. Glacier Free. How do I know all these? How do you know? That's my girlfriend's favorite one. I okay. bought that more than anything else. So I guess you Whoa. don't have to know it. Um, my favorite one is the most underrated Gatorade flavor there is. Watermelon. Citrus Cooler. Ooh. No one knows about that one. It's like mostly lemon lime, but a little bit orange. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. So here we go. Now we're going to get into the part where we're going to have, oh, green apple. Yeah. We're going to try to go over this the best we can since this information just came out roughly two hours ago. This information came out this morning and it's confusing. Yeah. So, so we're going to hit it as hard as we can. We're not right. going to back up. So we're not going to stop. Kevin will definitely let me know when I need to slow down the scrolling bar here. So, the first thing. Let's just start at the top. Let's write right. it down. Go ahead. All right. So, we're just going to read verbatim. I'm going to read That's verbatim plain. some of it. Plain Jane. All right. So, by Elaine Chase. So, this is um, Magic's brand manager, for those of you guys who do not know. Um, for now. Yeah, no problem, Cliff. Thanks for making an awesome program. Keep killing it. Um, I did all the work for the trailer. Anyway. So... Been over five years since the last change to the Players Club when they went from the number levels to the three tier, the three structure system or whatever you want to call it. The three tier structure is what they call it, with gold, platinum, silver, whatever. Um, new Pro Players Club will no longer be stationary to a season, but will instead shift to a rolling system that spans seasonal cycles tied to four major set releases each year. Okay, so importantly, before we go to that, is that it's effective after the conclusion of the 2017-2018 season. So I didn't just spew off my silver pro level for no reason. Okay, you that's are, good. You being bronze, you are, I, but you're bronze effective immediately, they said. Okay, so, so the you player get club will last for a thing. year. Hey, free. The old... I earned it. The old... Um, I earned it. Okay. The old system will last until, until September of next year. So 15 months from now, or so my question. From now. I'm going to hit you with a question before you're even done here. Yeah, yeah. So what if you get silver by the old system before the end of? Oh, September? so like if what happened to me this year happened to yeah. me a year from now? Yeah. I got silver like next summer, and three months later, silver ended. Yep. As we know it. I think I would just be silver for the first cycle okay. of next year. But I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm reading. I'm trying. Okay. All right? All right. So after the 2017-2018 season, the program will transform from a stationary annual model to a rolling model with four cycles. Players earn pro points during these four seasonal cycles, and pro club status is determined at the end of each cycle. So now each... um whatever you want to call it, like qualifying season, whatever we called the season working up to a pro tour. Yeah, they're going to call them cycles. They're going to call it cycles now, and each one is basically its own individual pro tour season. Correct. As far as I can tell. The top three highest earning pro point finishes among events in each cycle will count towards a person's status in the pro club. Pro club benefits will be adjusted for this new model accordingly, and pro point thresholds under this new model will be announced before the 2017 World Championship. We're adding a new level. Bronze! That's Effective for the 2017-2018 season for people named Daniel Fournier. Um, who constantly trolled about being bronze and now has <laughs> finally been actualized. It's hilarious. Um, and now he's silver when they made the bronze rule, which is even more funny. Bronze is achieved at 10 pro points, a.k.a. Dan Ward pro club level. Um, or Brandon Pascal pro club level. And grants players an invitation to regional pro tour qualifiers... And one buy, which we really need, at GP main events. Everyone okay. who has between 10 and 19 pro points in 2016 to 17 will automatically be granted bronze for the next season, including you. That's awesome, right? You laugh about the buy, but what if because of the cycles, they cycled the planeswalker You lose now? the buy. They will be. 
you will be doing that. The buy will so be so that important. means like the buy is like the buy is not a joke. It's yeah. serious. Yeah, I, I I remembered that, but then forgot it and remembered it again. Okay. The pro club thresholds are not changing for 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. So we just went over that. 20 for silver, 35 for gold, and 52 for platinum. So that's what we're going to spend this next year. Albuquerque and those three pro tours are going to be the old way. How it works. Four cycles, level changes four times a year. So we're just going to go over this, and then if there's questions, we're going to try to answer them. We're going to discuss it a little bit. Yeah. But there's so much information that I'm going to try to just read it back the best I can so that people understand what's happening. As like you would do in a news brief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of atypical. Usually we talk more than we read, but we're going to try true. to do this. So This is informative, so this is important. The new pro club will look back at pro points earned during the last four cycles. Is Tony okay? <laughs> to, to determine... A player status. Tony is our secret production manager. I He's can't making see weird him. noises like over there. Stressing me out. Um, levels in the pro club will be determined at the end of each cycle, rather than as soon as a player meets or passes a threshold for a pro club level. So, at the end of the season cycle, whatever you want to call it, the three month lead up, um, you will determine your pro club level, rather than as soon as a player meets or passes a threshold. So, at the end of the season, if you become platinum mid-season, you don't immediately get the benefits. So, how have they put out the point totals for each of these cycles yet? They have not. Yes. Okay. Each cycle will primarily take place within a time in which a set is the latest release for our constructed and limited formats, and will be named after each major Magic release accordingly. So, what this means is, um, so the first time this happens, it will be like, I mean... The new sets, like, if, if it started in Ixalan, it would be, like, the Ixalan cycle. Sure. But it's not starting in Ixalan. It's starting next year. Okay. But anyway, it, Ixalan, like, after Ixalan releases, through Pro Tour Ixalan, through the next release and the next Pro Tour, or stopping there, would be the Ixalan cycle, I believe. So, at the end of each cycle, we'll look back at the last four cycles to determine how many Pro Points each player has earned during them. Pro club statuses will be granted to, play, granted to players who meet the appropriate thresholds, and players in the pro club will be granted benefits for the duration of the next cycle. So if you attain one level in the first cycle, you will retain that until the end of the next cycle. Yeah, but what does this mean? This means that you're looking... going to be able to change statuses throughout the year. And so let's just say... They say platinum status is 15 pro points. Yeah, yeah. Let's say like that's it. It's probably going to be less than that because 52 right now. Let's say 13 pro points. You'll go from like top eighting a pro tour and being platinum for that season and the follow or that cycle and the following cycle, and then you'll drop down to whatever pro point threshold you're at. And also, my question to you is because this is only cycles, the pro points can only be earned within the cycle. Correct. Mm-hmm. So that leaves a really big gap on people that maybe, hey, I just won a Pro Tour, and now I'm going to take the next month off. But you, it forces players, at least the way we're reading it now, to like get back on the horse, if you will. To kind of try hard every single season. Yeah. It's like you're not going to be able to, like, oh, I spiked the Pro Tour, I'm platinum for two years. Well, if you're only trying, if, like, people are going to try even harder to be platinum. I mean, it's well, going yeah. to be even harder to be platinum, so people will give up on it and just try to be gold. Yeah, my first... Which means that the best players will actually be able to skate a little bit because they'll be able to get gold fairly easily and platinum will be fairly impossible. Is how I imagine these things to work. Maybe. But we'll see. Okay. Um, so, it says it looks back at the last four cycles, though. At the end of each cycle, we'll look back at the last four cycles to determine how many pro points each player has earned during them. So, are they giving people, like, pro club statuses if you had a good four-cycle year or whatever? Or are they just giving people one for each individual cycle? I don't, I don't really understand that. A player's... Oh, wait. That is important. A player's pro club level can change as each cycle passes. Meaning a player can accrue benefits from silver for one cycle, then gold for another cycle, then platinum for a cycle, then gold for another cycle, and so on. If you miss for one cycle, you can earn enough pro points to get those benefits for the next cycle rather than missing in one season and having to wait almost another year to potentially get those benefits again. Okay. So you can go. You can so they do roll. Cycles. They do roll through cycles. Pro points can be quickly tracked via your planeswalker points page or via a leaderboard page, similar to what we use for tracking the seasonal races. Um, 
that we'll be creating and regularly updating for players interested in conveniently looking up their pro points earned for each blah 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 blah. We'll be maintaining the leaderboard page once the first cycle in this new system completes. Your best three count in each new pro club. You have a maximum of three events that contribute to your point total in each cycle. Okay, so basically what it's saying here, not to interrupt you, but no, it's getting me. a little, uh, you're a little redundant here, so I want to stop for a second. Yeah, save my voice. Up. You kill it. Um, it's going to take, it looks here, the, the premier finishes, we're talking about Grand Prix, Pro Tours, Worlds, Nationals, and the World Magic Cup. It's going to take your best three into account here. And it shows the breakdown of the combinations that can contribute to how many pro points you can attain in each cycle. The interesting thing with this is that they're putting that much more um, weight into Pro Tours because Magic World Cup and the World Championships um, and Nationals to some degree are kind of like asterisks because you have to be invited to this. You know, Nationals, a lot of people get invites and it's only like, you know, one or a couple finishers in that tournament, right? <laughs> But World Magic Cup and World Championships, there's only a select few of individuals that even have the opportunity to attain these pro points, which was one of my biggest gripes when we talked about, you know, the status of the clubs to begin with, because we have people that are always playing on their World Magic Cup team, and they're getting a couple, even if it's a couple, a couple more pro points just for playing on that team, whereas someone that's like trying just as hard, but they're, you know, in a country that has a lot of Magic players and a lot of Magic players at the top of their game, you're never going to get there. Like someone that's like a gold level pro, you know, one of my guy, one of my friends, whatever, like Mark Jacobson, right? Uh -huh. Like he's a very good player, right? And he could be put on the same pedestal as a lot of these captains from smaller countries maybe, but he'll never, I don't want to say never, but it's going to be tough for him to, with this old system, get to 50 pro points Yeah. and be like, oh, well, I have beat the player of the year. I have 60 pro points. Like that's kind of unfathomable. So... What that says is, you know, we're going to take your best three finishes from those tournaments. More than likely, there's going to be two Grand Prix and one Pro Tour. Um, and if you're fortunate enough to play in any of the other events, then depending on how many Pro Points you've gotten Grand Prix, whether that weighs more than the World's Nationals and World Magic Cup. Wait, can it just be three Pro or Oh, because it's just only one, one Pro, Pro Tour because it's a cycle. Oh, there we go. Got so it. if you have like a Pro, you get three Pro, Pro, Pro Points for going to the Pro Tour. So, like, if you participate in a Pro Tour, you're going to have at least three Pro Points for that Pro Tour. And then Grand Prix, if you don't top eight, you know, the highest achievement you can get is X3 or X4 if you're X2 and yeah. just don't make it. So, I think you're going to see, like, four Pro Points, four Pro Points, and you're going to see Platinum, I think, be somewhere in the range of 12 to 15 points for a, for a cycle. Because that's going to show that you had like better than an average finish at the Pro Tour and that you did at least three points in each of the two Grand Prix that you're using. So that puts that at, like uh, like I said, around 11 or 12. So I got a sweet suntan. I look cool. Who's, who's looking jacked? Kevin's looking jacked. Yeah, he's looking really tan. jacked, baby. All right. He's looking jacked and tan. Daddy looking good. All right. No matter. We're going to look at the events that you're do, 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 the most pro points. All right. How we will transition... This is when it starts to get pretty confusing. There's a lot of dates, there's a lot of cycles, there's a lot of things going on. They even have a breakdown here. Do you get this, Kevin? Because I had a hard time trying to. You want me to try? This. You could try. Right. We can just bring up the system here and kind of look it over. So the rotating pro club will formally transition once we've gone past September 16, 2018. So what that means is what Kevin was talking about before that after four cycles, they're going to be able to look back at the four cycles. But these are cycles, so like, we're going to be playing Magic during the cycles before they're actually being counted as cycles. Yes. So the first four cycles are going to happen under the old system, and they're going to be retroactively fixed, jammed into the new program. Kind of displayed here. Exactly. Um, and Ixalan will be starting with it. And what's, you know, just to highlight this point again, um, they will be continuing the structure for the clubs until 2018. Mm -hmm. However, all of the new benefits, like, for example, people that maybe have never been silver before but now are bronze, you're going to be able to utilize those benefits starting with Ixalan. So. Yeah, so they're always going to look at your past, like, calendar year, basically. Your past four cycles. Um, like, your past 60 weeks of Magic or so, yes. roughly. So they're going to always be looking at that period. So it's always going to be a year of performance. 
Okay. But oh, each got individual you. cycle. Right. Appreciate that, Gabe. So, okay, so it may still be the same pro, uh, pro point totals, but instead they're going to group them by cycles now? It might be, but you can also achieve them per individual cycle. Oh, I got you. There's so if you have be, a good cycle... You can become platinum from your three-month stretch. Oh, okay. Like, they'll be like... I think it'll be like platinum for... Uh, per cycle is like whatever number it is, and then platinum for... A four-year cycle is whatever outlandish number it is. Okay. Like that. Something closer to what it is, 52 or whatever. I think we're going to move on a little bit down the down the page here because I think we're going to have to just wait for some more information to come out on this. And it's then a little we're bit hard to explain. It. Yeah. All right. So um, we don't have to run down everything here, but definitely take a look at this. This goes over what bronze, the addition of, uh, I guess we'll just bring that up because it's, it is the new one. You're going to get an invite to the regional Pro Tour qualifier. You're going to get a buy at the main event. So if you don't play a lot of Grand Prix, which, you know, by getting bronze, that doesn't, you know, really quantify. I think it's one of those asterisks that they want to make sure that if people only play a few and they're good. They want to get give them a, a nice little reward. And, you know, it doesn't hurt. So why not? Um, you get to compete in nationals. And uh, just to go back to the Grand Prix, like if it is going to be an accumulation after the cycles, then I don't know if they're going to change the Planeswalker yeah. points either. So it may just stay the same with that. Um, and the rest, I believe, is very similar to what they have now. So definitely take a look at that if you're interested in knowing the silver, gold, or platinum. I just wanted to highlight the bronze because that's the new one. Okay. And as Kevin says, highlighted here, so I highlight everything, bronze introduced and it's effective starting today. So guess what? You're bronze if you got 10 pro points. You're, You're looking at the bronze father right here. The bronze, bronze bombshell. Bronze, bronze. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. We need to go out on that video. We will. And people that don't get that yet, that's wrestling. That's Ty Dillinger. And he's a perfect 10. A perfect 10. And that's all you need is 10 to be bronze. So bang, we got him. Brandon Pascal is bronze. Ethan Gajewski is bronze. A lot of people are bronze. There's bronze. All right, so this gets into changes. I don't really care about that too much. What I'd like to talk about for a little while is something that else that was another bombshell. All right, so, so they released the um, they released the locations of the, the next uh, four Pro Tours. Uh, the Pro Tour in 2018 season will feature stops in Bilbao, Spain, February 2nd to 4th, and that's modern. Richmond, Virginia, June 1st to 3rd, that's standard. Minneapolis, Minnesota, August 3rd to 5th, and that's team constructed. Yeah. And then Atlanta, November 2nd to 4th, and I believe that is uh, standard. All yep, right. There you go. So. Um, and then next year's World Magic Cup will be Barcelona, Spain, December 14th to 16th, with format information coming in early 2018. All right, so do you want to talk about the Team Trios thing? You want to hit it a little bit? Yeah, this is going to be a huge announcement for a lot of people, so. I was kind of taken away uh, when I first I first heard this today. So, the team trios will be happening on the 25th anniversary of Magic: The Gathering. What's going to be going on is there's going to be obviously three players. There's going to be a split format, so they're going to be using standard Modern Legacy. So not only is Modern back on the Pro Tour, and we'll kind of get into that. There's going to be an actual mm -hmm. Modern Pro Tour coming up next year, but we're going to have Legacy again. Um, which is very exciting. And there's also going to be a, an additional tournament going on at this event. But one of the coolest things that we were, we were just talking about before the show, and, and correct us if we're both reading this wrong, but you are able to participate in the RPTQ for this Pro Tour, just this Pro Tour specific, yep. with two people that aren't qualified. That's great. Yes, you can tag two people who are not qualified for the RPDQ, and you can play with them in the RPDQ if you are qualified, provided that they're not already qualified for the Pro Tour. So, if you're a bronze level pro like myself, I'm like the little... You, know, you can get... I can grab any two any people two chuckleheads. and jump on my back, and we're riding into the RPDQ. Yep. Which means, hashtag MTG Finance, does that mean we get three M Merkles? Or whatever the promo is? I don't know. That's I should, value. should, right? That is value. That is value. So that makes it really exciting. 
Um, and I think it's a really nice way of capping off their, you know, the 25th celebration to allow more people to have the chance at getting to the Pro Tour. And people that maybe can't play all these PPDQs and grind, but can show up to like one tournament. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, PPDQs will be individual tournaments, but players who qualify for this round of RPDQs by winning a PPDQ can bring two teammates to compete with, provided they are not ineligible to compete in a regional Pro Tour qualifier due to already being qualified via other methods. So, what they're saying there is, even though you're qualifying for a team event, you'd be taking them with you, if you to the RPDQ. If you win a PPDQ, you can bring any two people who are not already qualified for the Pro Tour to the RPDQ with you. Yes, and it will be a team format. It will be a split yeah. format, at, which is going to be crazy. You can literally win a limited PDQ or whatever PDQ and get the best legacy player who's not on the Pro Tour and the best modern player and give you some stupid standard deck and you can go and just mop up people. Which, this is one of the things when this, this announcement weird. first came out that people were like, oh, Team Trios, it's not going to be fair. You can't play with your friends. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is perfect. This is sweet. This is going to be a, an event to watch. This is going to be, oh my God, now we don't have to worry about the, playing against Owen, Wait, where Huey. does it say that? What? Harlan said the RPDQ is unified standard. I didn't see that anywhere. Is it? I didn't see that either. But, it, okay, so... Well, it's team It's team constructed regardless. So what I'm... Okay, so if the the RPDQ might be unified standard, which is, in, which is interesting, and we'll have to find out if that's 100% true. Unified Modern was the weirdest format I've ever played. Oh, yeah. It's very hard to do. Unified Modern is very hard to do. Yeah, believe it. Believe it, I've played a Unified Modern before. It's also like you're sitting at a table, right? And there's like two matches going on on either side of you or whatever. And you like look over and your opponent like, are, your, your teammate's opponent just like abrupticates something. And you're just like, well, my opponent can never have abrupticate in his deck. Or like your teammate's opponent just lightning bolts something. You're how, like, well, there can't be lightning bolts that's how it works. in my opponent's deck. That's how it works. Which is interesting. Yeah. Same goes for like things like Thought Seize or whatever, where you would be like, oh, I'm kind of worried about them having this card, but if you see someone else cast it, Dispel is another one, uh, and th anything like that. It's just, it's just kind of weird. So just like, uh, I'm going to pay, I'm just going to pay, wait, wait, we'd have to talk about this comment because it's super interesting. I'm just going to pay the best semi-pros I can find to carry me to the Pro Tour. What about this? Yeah, that's cool too, but what do you think about that? That's a polarizing comment, right? That's an interesting comment. So, for one, if they're semi-pros, they might be qualified already. Yeah. Um, two, I don't know if paying to get there is... Uh, Are people going to be incentivized to do this? Because I don't even know if this person is being serious. They, yeah, they, they could be. They could be I acting mean, in, in... They could be jesting. They could be kidding. I mean, be being facetious to point out this, this in a glaring, real world scenario, like, if dynamic. someone came up to you and said, "Hey, I'll give you five hundred dollars to play with me," I would snap it off. Yeah, of course. It'd be stupid not to. Yeah. Well, I don't know legality of it as far as like I don't. See Is why it allowed? Going. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why it wouldn't be. No one would ever know. Uh, the internet age. I don't know. I mean, you can do this right now. Maybe there's team constructed in Atlanta this weekend. I could just be like, "Hey, Owen." Go to Japan a week late. Here's two grand. Be my teammate. There's nothing illegal about that. Okay. Right? Yeah, I guess. That is true. You're still not guaranteed to qualify. But it, it, but this certainly, this certainly incentivizes people to do this, right? I think, like, if you're someone that wants to get on the Pro Tour and you're willing to just pay that amount of money... I think it, you're just better off just using that money to play more tournaments. Maybe. But, like, that's not really the point, right? Well, the point is, if you're talking about a semi-pro, do they care about $500? Like, let's say the player that gives you the $500 isn't necessarily the best player, right? They yeah. just want you to coast. Is it easy to get to the RPTQ? Yeah, sure. You still got to win it, and, like, yeah, like, it may be easy there. But now you're taking someone that you, you know, took a week or two out of your life to prep for a PT... And now you're going to go to a PT and, like, be disadvantaged? All right, let, let me weave a scenario. All right, weave. This is fun. Bob and weave. So you and I, All right. we decide to hit the town after work. 
We're hitting the town. We're going Catskill, to New York. We're going to Catskill. We're going to get some lunch. Maybe we're going to Village. Maybe we're going to Taste of Catskill. Taste it's probably Catskill. closed because yes. my life is pain. Um, but so we're trying to go to Taste of Catskill. Trying. And we're walking down the street, just you and I in our Kerwin shirts. We're talking about magic. We're having a good time. And there's that alleyway. You know that alleyway by the movie theater? Yeah, it's scary. We walk past that alleyway, and we hear, <coughs> Hey, kids. <coughs> and we look over there. And in there, in the alleyway, is a, a man in a trench coat with sunglasses on. Okay. And he says, Hey, are you Dan Ward? Did you tell Kevin about that day that I met the guy in the trench coat? Are you Dan Ward? And, and you say, yeah. And he's like, hey, you, are you the daddy? Are you the daddy Jones? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, come here. I'm like, all right. I'm going to make you guys an offer you can't refuse. So next year, there's a regional Pro Tour qualifier at Kerwin's Game Store in Caskill, New York, the best place in sleeves. And if you aren't currently qualified for the Pro Tour, I will pay you guys each $1,000 to be my teammates for this tournament. What do you do? I find out if that's legal. Yeah, I'm not doing it if it gets you banned, obviously, but I can't imagine why it's not legal. No one would ever know that it's happening, right? True, but then we have to go to the Pro Tour if, well, when we qualify, because obviously we would qualify because the guy in the trench coat is probably really good. And, um, <laughs> and then we have the to play a like, Pro Tour with a guy we don't know. Who could the guy in the trench coat be? V? <laughs> He's a Hall of Famer. Okay, that is I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think he needs us to get to the Hall to the uh, Pro Tour. Um, who could it be? I don't know. We it's not know. illegal. It's not collusion. My teammates this weekend for Atlanta are Harlan Fuhrer and Tannen Grace. Nobody knows I didn't give them six hundred dollars each. But did you? No. There's no way you did. They would have had to give you six hundred dollars. I plead the fifth. Just because Daddy needs the cash. I don't know, man. I just don't think that there's anything wrong. I, I'm not sure that there's anything wrong with the I idea just, of actually doing it. I'm I just, just hope that doesn't come up. I hope I don't have to deal with that. It's That's certainly going to happen. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, if people know, like, for instance, there is a tournament going here, and, like, whether it be cash, whether it be through a favor, and let's just say that there was, you know, a 1% a, a chance that I would team with you for one of these things. Yeah. And you would team with me? How would we ever lose, honestly, if there was one here? We'd have to be, we'd have to, like, we would be a monster favorites, me and you on the same team at an RPTQ. Yeah. And so, like, the percentage of us having a shot at qualifying is just, like, would be really good. And so, I don't know. That'd be, that'd be weird if someone came up to both of us and, like, was like, hey, I'll only do it if you guys play together. Because what if, they're like, hey... You want to play with somebody, I wanted to play with somebody, but then they're like, no, you have to play with each other. What and if the me. guy just opened up his trench coat and there was just like rows and rows of like signed Manus Riders and slippery boggles just like in the guy's trench coat? And he was just like, do you understand the gravity of this? Dude, story? I think you're just living <laughs> this life that you want to be the guy in the trench coat. I just want to be in like a film noir where I bump into trench, awesome, awesome, trench coat chilling. wearing people in hallways and all sorts of nonsense like that. Mr. Jonathan? Some Look at chat. the Kerwin's Game Store bot being like, hey, you can rewatch the video when it's posted on our website. Guy who almost won the tournament who we were talking about for the first 25 minutes of the show. Well, I wanted to kind of talk about I don't think the Kerwin's Game Store bit, bot realizes but, you know, who they're you want to talk about off on. Spirit of the Hunt decks, and you want to talk about Yo, I'm playing that deck this weekend. I swear I am. And every deck that you would ever play. And the one deck you didn't really want to talk about is the deck you actually have played. And, like, wouldn't shut up about how powerful it was. Monument? Yeah. It's good. It's good? It's the it's number good. one deck in standard really right good. now. It's the prime time player. Yeah, but it's getting less interesting to me. There's well, so many new things going on. Standard's great. Scarab God is busto. Champion of Wits is busto. Kozlex Return is busto. Like, why aren't people doing something sweet with that? You just literally named every card that you played in the deck when we tested yesterday. Yeah, and I, we were good. We were 50-50-ish. No, we were not. You were okay, up one ish. game. I was up two games. Five no, to three. No, four to three. Five to three. Riddle Form is busted. There's a Riddle Form deck to top 64, too. Jesus. Riddle Form is good. Everything's busted. You just gotta find the shell. Scarab God is busted. Scarab God is busted. Scarab God is the best card in the set. All right, so what is this going on here? 
$1 million in prizes for a special special exhibition tournament. Will coincide tournament. with a special exhibition tournament. Which so this is going to be award. not the Pro Tour. Is this going to be one of those scenarios where like Pro Tour players are like trying to play both tournaments? I don't know. I think it'll be a separate time. I would I assume it'll be like a magic this is celebration going, type. Did thing. they say the which pro tour this is going to be? Is this the Minneapolis one? Minneapolis in um, okay. what is it? August, early August. So does that mean they're going to have like some ridiculous tournament that they're just trying to get everyone to go to Minneapolis that isn't qualified for the pro tour as well? Like imagine a world where you have the pro tour going on, and then there's like a trios tournament that like first place is like no. I think 000. I think that my guess is that the special exhibition tournament will be like. Just like the Cassius Marth, Marsh thing, like, to a million. You know, like, to the nines. It'll be, like, every celebrity who's played Magic. And, like, they'll all be invited. It'll be, like, Day 9 or Amaz. Like, random Hearthstone people will be invited. It'll just be, like, a bunch of celebrities showcasing Magic and, like, playing for money. And then there will be the Pro Tour at the same time. It'll be, like, the Pro Tour and, but like, Amaz the, is, the know, promotional like exhibition match. So does that mean we have a shot? No. Why not? Because we're magic celebrities. Okay. They want to watch us on the Pro Tour. People still think we're good. It's true. What we actually are, we are is good. good at talking. And good at life. And good at being people. Personalities. Yeah, we're great. Much better than we are at playing magic. We're minimal. We're medium as hell at, at playing magic. But we're <laughs> good at this. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. You're great. All right. So... That's going to wrap it up on the bombshells. We're going to be coming back to this for sure as soon as some more information gets uh, down the pipeline so we can better educate and inform y'all. So, lastly, to wrap the show up, let's get back over here to our lovely SCG webpage. SCG Atlanta. Kerwin's Game Store. Grand best place Prince in sleeves. As Kevin falls asleep over here. I've been um, giving it my all today. Let me have a nap. A nap? It's You need milk and cookies or something. Daddy it's nap time, nap. kindergarten cop. Daddy. All right, so you already said you're playing with Tanner Grace and Harlan. What yep. format are you playing? What deck are you playing? I'm playing standard. They're they're trusting you with standard. Yes. Well, I know Harlan's playing modern. Am why, I right? Why do you know Harlan's playing modern? Because you play the same deck and he plays it better than you. He plays it better than me? Yeah. Every time you've lost, that Harlan's been at the tournament, he's literally told you how you lost, and he and you were like, yeah. Sure. I lost that's not, once. That's, that's not wrong I information. I lost once in that entire tournament. No, there was like, well, you might have lost once, but you made incorrect plays more than once. Yeah, I made a few incorrect plays. Hey, I'm not life. saying I'm the greatest. We just got done saying how medium we are. I'm just backing up and supporting that statement. Harlan's a great modern player. He knows his deck Harlan better. is also medium. All right, Harlan, you're medium. But Get in that kick. Can you kick Harlan Fuhrer out of the chat, please? Harlan, you should be happy. Kick him out of the chat. That. He's He's abusing my fragile ego. Kick him out. So, that being said, I know he's playing modern. I don't know Tannen that well. Tannen's playing legacy. Tannen's great. Okay. Okay. I'm playing standard because there's nowhere else to hide me, and standard I'm lo least likely to draw. That is also <laughs> true. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. I'm going to be heading out to GP Toronto. We got some <laughs> limited action. <laughs> Look at the Kerwin's Game Store thing. Nightbot does not listen to Kevin. That's true. Nightbot's That's sleeping right now. It's sleeping on it. Someone just puts spamming links until the Nightbot wakes up and kicks Harlan out. <laughs> Harlan's not going anywhere. So I'm heading up to Toronto. We're going to play some sealed deck and hopefully some drafts. I do have a brew, a little concoction, ready to go for uh, the PTQ if things don't go well. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> Kevin just can't control himself. Oh, modern PT. Do we want to talk about that? Oh, the, the modern PT pretty much... Oh, yeah, sorry. We did, we did want to talk about that. We'll talk about it right now, I guess. Um, there is going to be a modern pro tour. Um, basically, I guess the question that was asked in the beginning, do we is there a reason why they brought it back? And do, is there a reason why they didn't mention why they didn't bring it back? So I think, and this is crazy, right? Because this is something Cedric Phillips said about six months to a year ago now. After they had the first team event, he goes, yeah. Uh, I came up with it, you know, whether he came up with it or we have this cool idea with the team tournament. Um, we'll have it for as long as, uh, until Wizards figures out how to do it, and then they're going to take it from us like they do everything else. Yeah. And he's right. And it's the same with Modern, I think. I think they finally realized, the, uh, the Wizards of the Coast, that is, that, like, yes, the pros were complaining about Modern and complaining about how they have to, like, keep up with all these formats, 
but modern is the heart and soul of magic right now. It is. It's what everyone who plays magic competitively plays. Yes. If you if you had to blanket people, most people who play magic competitively play modern. Yeah. Most local events that fire consistently are modern local. Events. Yeah, and the modern community is just like it, it's awesome. so much more dedicated, yeah. so much more awake than standard or legacy are. It's it's modern is is the heart and soul of magic. Yeah, right. and so I feel like they're omitting one pro tour because they always want to have the promotional tour promote the standard format. And they get away with doing the trios tournament because they're still going to have standard in there. And I would assume that they're going to feature that deck a little bit more than they would the other two, uh, especially over the legacy. Um, but I think like they're just saying, you know what, we're going to throw you this bone. We realize how popular modern is. Hopefully, uh, the following season when it comes out, there's going to be some more modern grand prix, um, and we're going to see some more. We didn't see hardly any this year in the United States. So I'm really looking forward to that. Modern Pro Tours, they're really exciting to watch. And like people are like, oh, well, Death Shadow, PT. Yeah, there's going to be Death Shadow there. But there's going to be like specialists that can just bring their deck to the table. Look at my elbows. They just look so weird like this. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. That's going to be the end of the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. We're going to close with a little perfect 10. Because that's our, you know, theme of the day for bronze. And here you go, a little Ty Dillinger. Here, comes here he comes. Thanks for everyone that followed. Hopefully we'll see you here next week at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time where we're kicking it off all, all day every day. Ty Dillinger. And just like Ty Dillinger, this show... Is a perfect ten. Who is that guy in the ring? Who, Braun Strowman. Oh, okay. The monster among men. Come on. Perfect ten. Appreciate it, Cliff. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And Nightbok got awoken. Kevin Zelbos. Oh! Bony and creepy looking. Yeah, thanks again for everyone following. We're going to have some more information next week, hopefully, on the uh, wizard statements. We're going to have a lot going on. We're going to have some <laughs> limited guy, champions. After it. We're going to get some Pro Tour uh, prep for everyone. Get ready. And then we'll go over the uh, SEG tournament this weekend in Atlanta. So, really looking forward to playing this weekend. It's been a couple weeks since I've played a premier level event. And yeah, Toronto's a great city, so I'm, uh, I'm real stoked. I've never been to Toronto. All my all my Ontario friends who I hang out with at uh, I hung out with them at the Envy and at GP Montreal are gonna be there, but I'm gonna be in Atlanta. So I'm Mr. Gold Farm, see David Gold Farm. So it's gonna be. Sweet. When is this show? When is what show? This show, our show. This show? Yeah. Wednesday every Wednesday at 12:30 Eastern. That's right. Live on Twitch. And it gets put right onto our website as well as our YouTube channel the day following. You can watch the the. Um, playbacks or the, all the archive videos on uh, you know KerwinsGameStore.com, and you can watch all the old episodes, all the arguments, all the back and forth, all the all deck, the, deck all discussion. The Kevin derailing right. the show with his elbows and cute little giggles as I talk about meaningful stuff. The that elbows happens. were funny. I just couldn't stop laughing. I don't know. I know. I know. You it never looked at your job. like looked straight at the ends of your elbows like that. It looks so weird. Yeah, I don't do that. Hey, man, you don't have to be interested in the way I live. You just have to be interested in the way that other people watch me live. I don't have to be interested in any of that. I guess not. As always, the Daddy Elbow Slayer Dangler, a.k.a. known as the Master of the Manus Rider, and you can't teach that. That's Dan Ward, and he doesn't care about my elbows. And you can't teach that. We'll see you next week. Take next care. Next week. Goodbye. And so, like, Green Lantern's breaking into the back cave. And what does he discover? A cave inside the back cave. Caveception. Yes. But they're lip sync battle. I heard she's not even in the movie that much. Look, well, of course. I mean, it's Mary Jane. It's not, it's not Mary Jane Presents. It's Spider Man Homecoming. Okay? <laughs> And you score six victory points. But while that flash is in play, the rogues cannot use their game effect, which is called teamwork. Right? So when I.